Hey everyone, welcome back to Owl of Asia. Today, we've got something special for you. We're diving into the vibrant life of Cebu City in the Philippines, as shared by a user on Reddit. This post takes us through the daily experiences, challenges, and unique charm of living in one of the Philippines' most bustling cities. So, sit back, relax, and let's explore Cebu City through the eyes of a local. Let's get started with the post. Hi all! I have been living in the Philippines as a digital nomad for over six months now. I have been here long enough where I feel confident to share a definitive review of what it is like here and whether you should consider living here yourself. I will start by giving a bit of background about my situation, the positives, negatives and mixed, and a summary at the end. I am a full-time, Monday to Friday, 9 to 5 digital worker for a company based outside the Philippines. I get paid in the currency of the country that my company is based in, which is very strong against the Filipino peso. I am in my late 20s and have lived and worked in a variety of places in the Asia-Pacific region, including Japan, Korea, Taiwan, Hong Kong, Australia and Malaysia. So some of my evaluations of the Philippines will be in comparison with those other countries. I am based in Cebu City, in the Visayas, which is a small city of about one million people. I chose to set up there as a base because it has good internet and all the services I need, such as groceries, hospitals and an international airport. It does not suffer from the traffic and crime issues of a place like Manila to quite the same level. I have, however, travelled and worked in more remote places around the Philippines as well, including Siargao, Boracay, Siquijo, Bohol, Negros and Palawan. The two most important takeaways from this part of the post is that 1. Cebu City provides the necessary infrastructure for a digital nomad lifestyle. It avoids the severe traffic and higher crime rates found in larger cities like Manila. This balance makes Cebu City an attractive option for remote workers seeking both convenience and a more relaxed environment. And two, they don't get paid in the Filipino peso, which significantly enhances their cost of living. This financial advantage allows them to enjoy a comfortable lifestyle without overspending. For digital nomads, choosing a location where their income goes further is crucial and the Philippines, with its favourable exchange rate, offers this benefit. Let's continue with the positives. Number one, very cheap. The Philippines is one of the cheapest countries I have been to, which still affords a comfortable modern lifestyle. $150 per week can get you a nice condo unit with a gym, pool, concierge and Wi-Fi in the centre of the city all bills included. This is through Airbnb, but it can go even cheaper if you rent through a local agency. Four dollars will get you a satisfying meal at a stall and a bit more for a sit-down restaurant. Due to inflation, food is weirdly more expensive here than in places like Malaysia or Vietnam, but groceries are extremely cheap if you are prepared to shop at markets Alcohol is dirt cheap, one dollar at stores for a bottle of beer and two to three dollars at a club or bar. Public transport costs nothing but is also quite bad, so it is better to catch Grab, which is basically an Uber, everywhere. This is about two to five dollars depending on distance. All told, living in a nice apartment, making food at home for breakfast and lunch but eating out for dinner Going out and doing whatever you want, museums, hikes, clubs, bars, would cost maybe $220 to $280 per week. Obviously more if you catch flights or travel long distances on the weekend, and a lot less if you are staying at hostels or shopping at markets. Number two, 
essentially everyone here speaks English. Even in rural areas, you're guaranteed to have someone around who you can communicate with. This is honestly such a big advantage for everything from navigating bureaucracy, ordering at restaurants, to asking directions. This is probably one of the biggest pros here versus Japan or Korea. If you want to meet the locals and not just hang out with expats, you can easily do it in the Philippines. Number three. The people here are extremely friendly and polite. Filipinos seem to be naturally outgoing and good-natured, so it is very easy to talk to people, make friends, or just have conversations. They are also very festive, so there are lots of opportunities for singing, partying, or drinking with the locals if you are okay putting yourself out there. And because everyone speaks English, it is easy to do so. Number four. The weather is great. It is warm all year, averaging around 27 to 32 degrees Celsius, depending on the area. The mountains of Luzon can get much colder and some cities can get much hotter. Walking around at night is always a pleasure. There are rainy and dry seasons which can limit time outside, but if you plan ahead, it is usually pretty easy to manage. Number five, the nature here is beautiful. Among the best waterfalls, the best islands, and the best sunsets you will ever see are all here in the Philippines. Most places are a short and affordable flight away. You will be spoiled for choice if you like to travel while you work, or even if you want to duck away for a long weekend, there are plenty of options. Navigating within the islands can be a little rough, buses, boats, but usually manageable. To highlight a few of their points, yes, the Philippines is really this affordable. It offers exceptional value for your money. You can enjoy modern amenities and a comfortable lifestyle at a fraction of the cost compared to many other countries. The ability to rent a well-equipped condo for a relatively low weekly rate highlights the affordability of urban living here. In addition, the widespread use of English across the Philippines significantly reduces language barriers, making it easy for expats to navigate daily life, handle administrative tasks, and integrate into the local community. This accessibility enhances the overall living experience for non-Filipino speakers. Let's move on to the mixed aspects. Number one. The food here is polarizing. Some travelers I met really do not like it. If you want to know what Filipino food is, imagine rice with meat, and that is basically it. A lot of easily accessible food here is fast food. And unfortunately, Filipinos do tend to like putting excessive salt and sugar in everything. I say this is mixed because having gone out and tried a lot, I actually really like Filipino food if you know where to look. Lashon, God's gift to the world. Sisig, Sinigang, Bicol Express, Lumpia, Kari Kari, and Adobo are all very tasty and affordable. I will admit that the food is not super healthy, so you will need to put effort into getting enough fruit and vegetables to stay alive. Also, if you are a vegetarian or vegan, just do not bother coming. Edit. Enough people have responded telling me that this comment about the difficulty of being a vegetarian vegan here isn't fully accurate. Although I found that Filipino food does tend to be very meat-based, I can also see how if you're prepared to eat different cuisines or look around a little, it could be doable. Maybe ask a vegetarian or vegan group in the Philippines to get more detailed info. Number two, the visa process. The good news is you can basically stay here indefinitely and getting an extension is easy. Walk in, pay, processing, walk out, no questions asked. The bad news is you need to keep applying for continued visa extensions, which can quickly become pricey about $50 for the first extension, $140 for the next few months, etc. 
You only get one month visa-free here, so the fees start adding up quickly. Number three. The history and culture here is less emphasized than in other places. If you like ancient temples, monuments, or dynamic trendy cities, you will not as easily find it here as elsewhere. The Philippines is a place you come to for the nature, not so much history or culture, unless you go to some areas of Luzon, like Banaue, Sagada, or Vigan. That is not to say what is here is bad, and some cultural events are world-class, Sinologue Festival in Cebu, for instance. But it is not as integral a part of the experience as a place like India or China. I have to disagree with this take on Filipino food being polarizing, and mainly just rice with meat. Filipino cuisine is incredibly diverse and rich in flavors. Sure, fast food is easily accessible, but if you dive into the local food scene, you'll find a wide array of delicious dishes that are anything but bland or overly salty and sweet. Let's move on to the negatives they had. Number one. The infrastructure here is terrible, especially in the cities. In places like Manila, a two-kilometer drive in rush hour can take over 30 minutes. That is why I strongly urge you to not stay in Manila. Other urban areas are a bit better, like Iloilo and Dumaguete, but still not amazing. If you like walking through a city to see the sights, you will not have a great time. They do not have sidewalks, the motorbikes drive too close to you, etc. Number two. Some elements of navigating bureaucracy are weirdly complicated and inefficient. For example, your visa extension is a printout of paper, not logged in a computer, so bad luck if you lose it. Doctors do not seem to take bookings. You need to show up and hope for the best. It can make dealing with stuff that goes wrong a massive pain. Number three. Poverty and crime do exist here. There are slums and no-go areas, especially in big cities like Manila. However, I personally have never once had a bad experience and the kind of places that are genuinely dodgy are ones you would, as a tourist, never go to in the first place. I have walked around drunk at night through dark streets and never had anything bad happen to me. In general, the risk of theft and crime is overstated, especially by Filipinos themselves, but it is definitely not a Japan or an Australia in that regard. Number four. Most of the tourists and expats here can be split into two groups, backpackers passing through and obese balding, British or American men in their 50s hunting for girls half their age to wife up. Unfortunately, the latter are quite visible in the cities and can give a bad reputation to foreigners in the country. In general, if you like to go to places with big expat communities and meet young people doing the cool digital nomad lifestyle, you will have fewer options here than in other Asian countries. I think their perspective on tourists and expats in the Philippines is quite judgmental and unfair. Yes, there are diverse groups of people who come to the Philippines, including backpackers and older expats. But categorizing them in such a negative light oversimplifies and misrepresents the community. Many expats, regardless of age, choose to live in the Philippines for its culture, natural beauty and welcoming people. They contribute positively to the local community and economy. Moreover, the digital nomad scene is growing, with plenty of young professionals and entrepreneurs setting up base in cities like Cebu and Manila. The Philippines offers vibrant co-working spaces, networking events, and opportunities to connect with like-minded individuals. It is important to approach this with an open mind and recognize the diversity and positive impact of all types of expats and tourists in the country. Making broad and negative generalizations only serves to create unnecessary divides and overlook the richness of the expat community in the Philippines. 
The other negatives can be easily shown in other cities and countries as well. Let's finish out this post. In summary, if you love beautiful nature, enjoy talking to or meeting locals, want to get a good lifestyle on the cheap, like meaty or savoury foods, want to spend a very long time in one place without worrying about deportation, the Philippines is for you. By contrast, if you strongly prefer old history or culture, like hanging around one city for months on end and always having new stuff to do, are vegetarian or vegan, prefer to hang out mostly with expats or other digital nomads, like clean cities with less obvious poverty or crime, then there are probably better places for you to go. Keep in mind, this is just one person's experience. I have met people who spend months on the more out-of-the-way islands, like Siargao or Sikihor, and they have a very different, more laid-back experience compared to me. Overall, I love it here. The friends and experiences I have had, I cherish greatly, particularly once you go travelling to the beautiful islands. If you have any additional questions, feel free to ask in the comments. Let's actually look at some comments from the post that I found insightful for us to look at. This first comment talks about whether locals in certain areas speak enough English to manage daily activities and bureaucratic processes. One responder notes that in tourist areas and cities, most people speak English well, especially younger educated individuals. They compare the English proficiency in Cebu to that of the Netherlands, suggesting a high level of fluency. Another commenter adds that English is an official language in the Philippines, implying that it's not surprising that locals understand at least some English. Honestly, I'm not surprised by the high level of English proficiency in the Philippines mentioned in the Reddit discussion. What's really interesting here is the comparison one commenter makes between the English skills in Cebu and those in the Netherlands, which is known for its high English proficiency. That kind of comparison really puts things into perspective, showing just how comfortable you can expect to be when it comes to language barriers there. Also, the point about English being an official language in the Philippines adds another layer of reassurance. It means that not only will casual interactions likely be smooth, but dealing with any official matters won't pose a major language challenge either. This really gives a thumbs up to travelers worried about language issues in the Philippines, which can be super helpful for anyone planning a visit. In this second comment, they're talking about visa extensions and their costs. They're quite affordable. While you might have to do visa runs in some countries, as you can read, the process has been fairly streamlined. It's friendly for tourists. The Philippines is accommodating for tourists planning longer stays, making it a viable option for those looking to explore the country more extensively or even settle temporarily. It's clear that the process is designed to be user-friendly and cost-effective, which is great news for anyone considering an extended stay. The additional information about the visa run process simplifies what might otherwise seem like a daunting aspect of long-term travel or residency. Thanks for joining us on Owl of Asia as we dove into the experiences of a digital nomad living in Cebu City, Philippines. I think that their assessment of Cebu City was fair. From the affordability and vibrant social scene to the challenges with infrastructure and unique food culture, it's clear that the Philippines offers a distinctive lifestyle that appeals to many, but may not be for everyone. But remember, this is just one person's perspective, and experiences can vary widely. If you have any thoughts or questions, be sure to leave them in the comments below. We'd love to hear your take or help answer any questions you might have. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on our latest explorations. 
stay curious, stay adventurous, and we'll see you next time on Owl of Asia.